Hello, welcome back, hope you are doing well. Today you join me in the iconic Queenstown, New Zealand, where we're continuing my tutorial series in the ATR72600 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we're going to be discussing everything you need to know about the FMS, including how to manually configure an operational flight plan, inputting our payload weights and balances, along with all the relevant takeoff data, cruise altitudes and weather. And then a bit later, I'll also briefly go over how we do the same process with a few shortcuts using our EFB. So with that in mind, let's hop inside and get things started. So as you can see, all our avionics systems are initialised. If you want to see my tutorial on how to set up the aircraft from cold and dark, I'll put a link up at the end of this video. Uh, but for today, let's focus on the FMS then. So let's press FMS1 active to bring up the init menu, and then we'll hit uh, the pause init button, uh, which lets us set our GPS position. So let's hit the GPS location, and then sensors in it so the plane now knows where we are. Uh, on the nav data page that's just uh, confirming that we've got all the latest nav data so that's all looking good uh, and then we're going to come to our flight plan in it so let's hit that and then hit the route button. So for today's tutorial then let's plan a flight from here in Queenstown which is NZQN and we're going to be going over to Christchurch uh, which is NZCH uh, and then we can just drop that into our route at the top left. And there we go. And then all we need to do is hit the exec button. So there we go, that's our basic flight plan. So what I'm going to do now is just check the waypoints we need to add on my Simbrief flight plan. And our first waypoint is Tim Joe. So let's add that in. Okay, there we go. And that goes in underneath our Queenstown departure. And then the next waypoint we're going to be adding in is the Dockey waypoint. Uh, so let's add that in underneath Tinjo. Okay. Again, add that in. Okay. So what we need to do now is move on to our SID out of Queenstown. So let's just execute that to confirm. And then we go over to the uh, button next to the Queenstown departure, which is top left. So we hit that. And then, as you can see, that brings up our runway list. And we're going to be departing on runway 23 by the Vapley 2 SID. So hit that. And our transition is going to be the Tim Joe. There we go. So we hit that. And again, execute. So that's adding all the waypoints for our uh, standard instrument departure, which all looks good. And now we can turn our attention to our arrival into Christchurch. So let's scroll down to the bottom and find our Christchurch arrival. There we go. So hit the button next to that. And that will bring up our approach list. And we're going to be coming in on the ILS 20. So we'll press the button next to that. And then we can choose our star, which is going to be, uh, where are we? The Dockey 3 Bravo. So let's hit that. And we don't need a transition for this arrival, so let's execute that. And there we go, and um, we've just got one uh, discontinuity that we need to resolve. So if you hit the clear button, and then uh, the button next to the discontinuity, that will uh, join up all the dots. And there we go, as you can see, we've got a, a full flight plan with no discontinuities or errors. And at the bottom there in blue is our missed approach as well. So that all looks nice, uh, good. And then what I like to do is, if we go up to the nav display, uh, we can just uh, flip through all those waypoints, you know, hitting the next button, uh, just to make sure that everything looks as it should. And we can sort of track our flight all the way over to Christchurch, make sure there's no funny lines or discontinuities, as I mentioned. Uh, and that's all looking good. So here's our star into Christchurch. Oop, if I zoom out a little bit, actually. Uh, go back. There we go. That's the, the star into Christchurch. And again, the missed approach in the blue dotted line. So. That all looks perfect. Okay, so that's our flight plan all set and checked. So let's come back to our init menu. Uh, if you hit the data button followed by init, that'll bring us back to where we were before so we can work our way through the menu. So we've done pause init, done the nav data, done the flight plan. So let's move on to our weights. And there we go, as you can see, they're all blank at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take the data directly from my Simbri flight plan and pop that in. So we've got a zero fuel weight of 19238. 
So we'll drop that into the zero fuel weight. We've got fuel on board of, uh, let's see, uh, where are we? Uh, 2041. So we'll drop that in, and that gives us a gross weight of 21279. And our reserves are 1004. So we'll add those in as well. And it's just showing us our center of gravity at 26.9% and a takeoff trim of 1.1. But I'll come back to that and how we set that shortly. Okay, so into Perth in it then. Uh, we're going to add in our cruise altitude. Uh, so that is, just checking my flight plan again, uh, 17,000 feet. So we can drop that in top right. We can also add in our alternate route uh, and cruise altitude, which is going to be uh, Wellington, which is NZ. Uh, w N uh, slash and the alternate cruise is going to be uh, flight level 190 and we can drop that in as well and it just takes a couple of seconds to populate and there we go that's all sorted okay so if we hit the perf button again that brings up our takeoff performance page and as you can see it's got our runway length and the uh, course as well and we just need to add in our transition altitude as well. So if I just check on the charts, uh, transition altitude is uh, 13,000 feet here in Queenstown. So we can add that in there. And as you can see, it's also populated our V speeds for us. So we've got a V1 of 109, rotate 109, and our V2 of 113. So let's hit perf again then to bring up our cruise performance. Um, here we can add in some uh, average wind data, again from our Simbri flight plan. Uh, which is 289 degrees at 45 knots. So we can add that in to our mean wind. There we go, perfect. And if we come down, we can see that it's already sensed our cruise altitude from when we input that earlier. So hit the perf button again to bring up our approach performance page. And I just need to double check on the charts again uh, for the transition altitude at Christchurch, which is the same, uh, flight level 130. So we can add that into there. And if we take a quick look at the live meta for Christchurch, we've got a QNH of 1012. So we can add that in as well. And then we've got our approach speeds uh, of uh, 114 knots and our flap settings for landing of full. So that'll be flaps 30 for landing in the ATR and that is all our performance data complete. So let's go through a few more functions within the FMS then. If we hit the RMS button that brings up our comms uh, page so basically that's a, that's a repeat of what we see on the nav display here and whatever we set within the nav display uh, so for example uh, if I put my standby frequency set to uh, 1 to five decimal four and hit enter yeah, so that that's dropped it in on the nav display and also as you can see it's it also put it in on our comms page so that's basically what that page is there so you've got two options really for adding your comms and the same with uh, the nav frequencies for any ILS or um, VORs anything like that we can add them in here as well as through the nav display okay moving on the flight plan we've already been through and set that up so that's all good uh, DTO, that's our direct to button. So if we hit that, uh, we can just basically pick any um, waypoint that we may be given a direct to, and then we hit execute, and that'll just navigate us to that particular waypoint. Uh, but I won't execute that for now. Okay, so a little tip here, everything has turned yellow, which basically means we've got a temporary flight plan. So we just need to hit the clear temporary button, and then there we go, everything goes back green. So that's all as it should be. So to the progress page then, that shows us any upcoming constraints, uh, top of descent, that kind of thing, and also sort of detailed information for each waypoint with course, distance, uh, fuel on board, all that kind of stuff, winds up there as well. So uh, and then the last page, uh, we've got some GPS info as well. So that is the progress. And lastly then we have the uh, VNAV button which just gives us a bit of information on our destination airport. We've got the transition altitude again, we can add the QNH or the SAT and it's also sensed there our runway elevation of 106 feet. Okay so that is pretty much everything we need to know about the FMS in the ATR 72600 but as I mentioned earlier there are a couple of shortcuts we can do uh, using the EFB 
uh, to help set some of the data. So let's go through that now. So down to the EFB then, and if we click on the flight plan tab at the top left of the screen there, uh, that brings us through to this page where we can log in to our Simbrief account. Yeah, that's my login there. And that allows us to import our operational flight plan from Simbrief. So we click import flight plan here. And there we go, that brings in all our waypoints that we've uh, just put in for this flight. Uh, and it's also got all our weights and measures and fuel, that kind of stuff. So basically what we need to do now is hit the set flight plan button next to that. And that will send all the data from the EFB down to the FMS. And if we take a quick look at our FMS, there we go, there's all our waypoints added in automatically for us. Just a bit of a shortcut to what we did before. Uh, but what we do need to still do is add our SIDs and STARS. So uh, from there you go in as we did previously, uh, add in our departure runway, which is 23, followed by our Vapley 2 SID and our transition of Timjo. And we execute that as we did previously. And the same for our arrival into Christchurch. Uh, we pop in our ILS runway 20 again, and also our Dockey 3 Bravo star. So we'll add that in as well. And again, no transition required there, so we'll just execute that. And we just need to clear that discontinuity again, which is there. So hit the clear button and execute. And there we go, that is our fully operational flight plan sorted. And again, back to the nav display, what we can do is also uh, run through every waypoint again, just to make sure everything's loaded in correctly. Uh, there's our top of descent and our star into Christchurch, which is all looking good. Okay, so back down to the FMS then, there is one more shortcut that we can use the EFB for, and that is back in our weights section. So as you can see, they're all blanked in again. So if we go back up to the EFB, and back in the flight plan screen, we press the set fuel button and also the set payload button. And then we can come across to the payload tab, which is the next one across. And as we can see, all our weights are still blanked in on the EFB, but if we press uh, load aircraft, uh, there we go, there's all our weights and measures of fuel that we can now add in by pressing the start loading button. And we can close that. So that's added all our weights into there. And it also gives us our center of gravity and takeoff trim, which we press here, set takeoff trim, and that also sends that down to the FMS. And there we go, there it is shown on both our center display there, and also uh, within the FMS, along with all our weights that we've just entered in. So that's all worked nicely. So there we go, that is how we load the FMS using a couple of shortcuts from the EFB. And that concludes today's video on loading the FMS in the ATR 72600. Uh, I hope you found it interesting, uh, maybe learnt something new. If you did, give it a like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.